Hey gang, Scott here. So I, I know that uh, Photoshop and generative AI has uh, been getting a lot of buzz, a lot of videos about it, and for good reason. It is a very powerful tool. Uh, I'm using it for retouching primarily, not so much for um, for compositing or you know adding more things into a photo. And it works very very well for removing distractions. But I wanted to show you an example here because I'm working on a photo where I need to take something away. And and a little tip about the different uh, variant objects that Photoshop will suggest for uh, for how to keep your file sizes down once uh, once you're happy with a with a replacement from generative fill. So let's have a look here. So in this photo here, uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy with most of the scene, but there is this man-made structure in the the lower left, and let's zoom in on this a little bit so we can see it here. It's just not adding to my story. I like the people. I mean, the people. This you know, it just gives this scene scale, right? I mean, this is up in the the Jungfrau area, the Swiss Alps, and these are you know full-sized humans, and this landscape is just enormous. This is not helping my story. It's it's just distracting. And so I will use generative fill to get rid of it. Now, if you're using Photoshop at all, you you kind of know how this this part of it works, right? You know, you make a selection and I'm going to use the lasso for this since it's uh, a kind of an odd shaped thing. And I'm being, you know, pretty pretty, you know, broad with the selection there. Great. And I'm just going to click generative fill. No prompts, nothing at all. I just want you to generate something that will match this scene closely. So Photoshop goes off and does this, and as I'm sure you've seen in some other uh, some tutorials and so forth, you get a few choices of what you want to put in there. And I'll show you how I work with these choices, and then one tip for keeping your file sizes down once you've made your choice. So uh, Photoshop's done with that. Let me zoom back out. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is get my zoom tool. Let me zoom back out because I want to see this in full context first. So here are the variations. One, two, three that it gave me. So one is already selected. I select two, watching that lower left corner. We see a difference. And then three, we see another difference. I don't like three. I like two because it kept some of the snow there. And one's not bad, but of, of the three of them, I think I like this one the most. And then I'll zoom in and see, you know, well, there's some, there's some other stuff in here that I'll probably want to clean up. You know, if I look at them closer now, you know, this was probably a cleanest blend, but I, I like how there's, there's an arc of snow here, but these dark pieces I'll, I'll need to clean up with some additional generative fills. So, you know, repeat this process for, uh, for a couple of touch-ups here. But the thing to do next, or that I do next, is zoom back out. Let's get that all the way in the screen here. You're clicking the wrong button, Scott. There we go. And now I'll toggle this off and on before and after. And I'm trying to compare, is that reasonable? Is it believable? You know, and I can do this with the other ones as well, since the fill ends up on a layer. You know, is it reasonable? Because I've seen cases where you know, the, the generation is good, but one variation is better than another when looked at in the grand scheme of does it fit the scene well. So in this case, I'm, I'm happy with, the, with these. I like the second variation. So the tip about keeping your file sizes down is get rid of the other ones you're not using. Just hit that little trash can icon, take them out of there. It helps keep your file sizes down. And then finally, I'll I'll, I'll come you know combine these into a single layer. I'll do that you know that Shift Command Option E thing. You know get a new stamped layer in Photoshop because if I want to go do more work on the photo, I want to do it on the sum total of all the layers with my generated fill. So from neck here, I'm going to go touch up those uh, those little dark spots that uh, I didn't find pleasing. But uh, the the takeaways for this is with the generative fill, you know, select something you don't like, don't give any prompts, hit the button, take a look at the variants, the, the variations, both close and zoomed out, and then toggle the one you like off and on just to double check: is this a really good blend for the photo? Sometimes you'll see it changing the scene maybe more than you want it to because it is 
you know, generating what it believes would be a, a good match for things. And it could change, in my case, mountains. The ridge lines might start to look different. And uh, you know, you may not want that if it's a recognizable scene or subject. Hope you found the video useful, interesting. Got questions? Drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.